Hi everyone. A junk is a type of Chinese sailing ship with fully battened sails. There are two types of junk in China, the northern junk, which developed from Chinese riverboats, and southern junk, which developed from Austronesian ship designs used in trade with the Eastern Han Dynasty since the 2nd century CE. They continued to evolve in later dynasties, and were predominantly used by Chinese traders throughout Southeast Asia. Similar junk sales were also adopted by other East Asian countries, most notably Japan where junks were used as merchant ships to trade goods with China and Southeast Asia. They were found, and in lesser numbers are still found, throughout Southeast Asia and India, but primarily in China. Historically, a Chinese junk could be one of many types of small coastal or river ships, usually serving as a cargo ship, pleasure boat, or houseboat, but also ranging in size up to large ocean-going vessel. Found more broadly today is a growing number of modern recreational junk rigged sailboats. There can be significant regional variations in the type of rig or the layout of the vessel, however, they all employ fully battened sails. The term junk was also used in the colonial period to refer to any medium to large sized ships of the Austronesian cultures in islands Southeast Asia, with or without the junk rig. Examples include the Indonesian and Malaysian Jong, the Philippine Karakoa and Lanong, and the Malaku Kora Kora. Construction the historian Herbert Warrington Smith considered the junk as one of the most efficient ship designs, stating that as an engine for carrying man and his commerce upon the high and stormy seas as well as on the vast inland waterways, it is doubtful if any class of vessel is more suited or better adapted to its purpose than the Chinese or Indian junk, and it is certain that for flatness of sail and handiness, the Chinese rig is unsurpassed. Iconographic remains show that Chinese ships before the 12th century used square sails. The full-length battens of the junk sail keep the sail flatter than ideal in all wind conditions. Consequently, their ability to sail close to the wind is poorer than other fore and aft rigs. Hull. Classic junks were built of softwoods with the outside shape built first. Then multiple internal compartment, bulkheads accessed by separate hatches and ladders, reminiscent of the interior structure of bamboo, were built in. Traditionally, the hull has a horseshoe-shaped stern supporting a high poop deck. The bottom is flat in a river junk with no keel, similar to a sampan, so that the boat relies on a daggerboard, leeboard or very large rudder to prevent the boat from slipping sideways in the water. Another characteristic of junks, interior compartments or bulkheads, strengthened the ship and slowed flooding in case of holing. Similar wet wells were also apparent in Roman small craft of the 5th century CE. Leeboards and centerboards. Other innovations included the square pallet bilge pump, which was adopted by the West during the 16th century for work ashore, the western chain pump, which was adopted for shipboard use being of a different derivation. Junks also relied on the compass for navigational purposes. The Chinese embarked magnetic pointer was probably little used for navigation. The reasoning is simple. Chinese mariners were as able as any and, had they needed a compass to navigate, they would have been aware of the almost random directional qualities when used at sea of the water bowl compass they used. Yet that design remained unchanged for some half a millennium. Steering. Junks employed stern mounted rudders. The side rudders in use were still extremely efficient. Thus, the junk rudder's origin, form, and construction was completely different in that it was the development of a centrally mounted stern steering oar. It was an innovation which permitted the steering of large ships and, due to its design, allowed height adjustment according to the depth of the water and to avoid serious damage should the junk ground. A sizable junk can have a rudder that needed up to 20 members of the crew to control in strong weather. In addition to using the sail plan to balance the junk and take the strain off the hard to operate and mechanically weakly attached rudder, some junks were also equipped with leeboards or dagger boards. Sui to the rise of Song Dynasty, 7th century 10th century. 
In 683 CE, Tang Court sent an envoy to Srivijaya, which seems to have been done in foreign ship. Wang Gungwu stated that there are no records from Tang Dynasty era that mention Chinese junks being used for trading with southern countries. Chinese and Korean ships sailed to Kyushu for private trade with Japan in the 9th century. Song Dynasty, 10th-13th century. In 989 CE the Song court permitted private Chinese ships to trade overseas. The ships of the Song, both mercantile and military, became the backbone of the navy of the following Yuan dynasty. In particular the Mongol invasions of Japan, 1274-1281, as well as the Mongol invasion of Java, 1293, essentially relied on recently acquired Song naval capabilities. Worcester estimates that the largest Yuan junks were 36 feet, 10.97 meters, in width and over 100 feet, 30.48 meters, long. In general, they had no keel, stem post, or stern post. They did have center boards, and a watertight bulkhead to strengthen the hull, which added great weight. This type of vessel may have been common in the 13th century. By using the ratio between the number of soldiers and ships, New Groho concluded that each ship may carry a maximum capacity of 30 or 31 men, while using data presented by John Mann would result in a capacity of 29 to 44 men per ship. Yuan Dynasty, 14th century. Yuan Dynasty ships carry on the tradition of Song, the Yuan Navy is essentially Song Navy. Both Song and Yuan employed large trading junks. The large ships, up to 5,000 Liao or 1520 to 1860 tons burden, would carry 500 to 600 men, and the second class, 1,000 to 2,000 Liao, would carry 200 to 300 men. Unlike Ming treasure ships, Song and Yuan great junks are propelled by oars, and have with them smaller junks, probably for maneuvering aids. The largest junks, 5,000 Liao, may have a hull length twice that of Chuanzhou ship, 1,000 Liao, that is 68 meters, 223.1 feet. Large size could be a disadvantage for shallow harbors of southern seas, and the presence of numerous reefs exacerbates this. Ming Dynasty, 15th-17th century. The largest junks ever built were possibly those of Admiral Zheng He, for his expeditions in the Indian Ocean, 1405 to 1433. Zhao Jigong claimed that he has solved the debate of the size difference, and stated that Zheng He's largest ship was about 70 meters, 230 feet, in length. From the mid-15th to early 16th century, all Chinese maritime trading was banned under the Ming Dynasty. The shipping and shipbuilding knowledge acquired during the Song and Yuan dynasties gradually declined during this period. Capture of Taiwan In 1661, a naval fleet of 400 junks and 25,000 men led by the Ming loyalist Zheng Cheng Gong, arrived in Taiwan to oust the Dutch from Zealandia. Following a nine-month siege, Cheng captured the Dutch fortress Fort Zealandia. A peace treaty between Koshinga and the Dutch government was signed at Castle Zealandia on February 1, 1662, and Taiwan became Koshinga's base for the Kingdom of Tungning. Javanese Junk Javanese junks differed from Chinese junks in several respects. The Javanese junk was made of very thick wood, and as the ship got old, it was fixed with new planks, this way they have three to four planks, stacked together. The rope and the sail were made with woven rattan. The jong was made using jutty wood at the time of this report 1515, at that time Chinese junks are using softwood as the main material. The jong's hull is formed by joining planks and keel by wooden dowels, without using iron bolts or nails and a frame. The planks are perforated by an auger and inserted with dowels, which remain inside the fastened planks, not seen from the outside. The hull was pointed at both ends, they carried two rudders and used tanya sail, but it may also use junk sail. It differed markedly from the Chinese vessel, 
which had its hull fastened by iron nails and strakes to a frame and to bulkheads. The Chinese vessel had a single rudder on a transom stern, and they had flat bottoms without keels. The Empire of Majapahit used a very large version of these ships, built in North Java, for transporting troops overseas. The main production location of Zhong was mainly constructed in two major shipbuilding centers around Java, North Coastal Java, especially around Rembong de Mac and Kiribon, and the south coast of Borneo and adjacent islands. These places have teak forests, whose wood is resistant to shipworm, whereas Borneo itself would supply iron wood. Pegu, which is a large shipbuilding port in the 16th century, also produced Zhong built by Javanese who resided there. Qing Dynasty, 19th century. Large, ocean-going junks played a key role in Asian trade until the 19th century. One of these junks, Qing, sailed from China around the Cape of Good Hope to the United States and England between 1846 and 1848. Many junks were fitted out with carronades and other weapons for naval or piratical uses. These vessels were typically called war junks or armed junks by Western navies which began entering the region more frequently in the 18th century. The British, Americans and French fought several naval battles with war junks in the 19th century, during the First Opium War, Second Opium War and in between. At sea, junk sailors cooperated with their Western counterparts. For example, in 1870 survivors of the English bark Humberston shipwrecked off Formosa, were rescued by a junk and landed safely in Macau. Modern Period, 20th Century In 1938, E. Allen Peterson escaped the advancing Japanese armies by sailing a 36-foot, 11 meters, junk, Hummel Hummel, from Shanghai to California with his wife Danny and two white Russians. In 1955, six young men sailed a Ming Dynasty-style junk from Taiwan to San Francisco. The four-month journey aboard the Free China was captured on film and their arrival into San Francisco made international front-page news. In 1959 a group of Catalan men, led by Jose Maria Te, sailed from Hong Kong to Barcelona on a junk named Rubia. After their successful journey this junk was anchored as a tourist attraction at one end of Barcelona harbor, close to where La Rambla meets the sea. Permanently moored along with it was a reproduction of Columbus Caravel Santa Maria during the 1960s. Thanks for watching.